You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Hey, you're listening to Adulting with Horses, the best place to be if you can't be at the barn. We are your co-hosts and equine authors, Heather Wallace and Natalie keller Reinert. As crazy horse girls, we don't take ourselves too seriously in the saddle or out. We celebrate the things that make us different. Join us as we talk about horses and pop culture and get a little weird in a fun way. Thank you for being a little weird with us. Hi, Natalie. Hello. This is a big test. I have zero percent uploaded for me. And me. But that's because we haven't really said anything. So maybe just, <laughs> mine's uploaded. Mine's uploading. Yours. Oh, mine just started uploading. I think we did it. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You saw we'll it. See. It just started uploading. Oh my we'll God, see. we're amazing. So what people don't know is that we've been trying for 15 minutes now to get this to work. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Okay. We've been recording two minute increments. It's been great. Um, yep. Yep. I guess Lots we'll spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So should we start over and stay and save you the task of trying to. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not going to edit all that of the other. We do it as a blooper reel. Um, <laughs> that's not even that funny. <laughs> it's not even that funny. No, no, I don't no, no. Think no. It's worth we preserving. can just rehash the drama of our lives. <laughs> Our lives have been dramatic. The eclipse chaos touched us. You know what? And I am like reserved on the astronomy, astrology thing. Like, you know, I'm not sure how much power I want to give the sun. However, it's not your choice. It's not my, clearly, <laughs> it is not my choice because this eclipse week, I'm mm-hmm. just going to go through it real quick and like just like a little snapshot. Um, my kids' passports expired and I realized two days before we left to go to Turks and Caicos, right? Because we haven't left the country in five years together. Um, right. So that was super fucking fun. And then shout out. That's fine. Yeah. Shout out to the doggos. It's like a Jane's Addiction song. <laughs> She's muting her dogs. Everyone write in. And tell us how much you want to hear her dogs. She's got a murder pack of ex- insane dogs, and I, we think we should. No hear one's them. breaking into my house, by the way. Like, <laughs> if, like if you hear this, the UPS driver has the fucking nerve. <laughs> nerve. All right, and there's nothing I can do. So she's disappeared. Um, Heather has run away. I don't know if she'll ever come back. She may just jump in the UPS truck and be ferried away to a new life. Fun fact, I have ridden in a UPS truck and it's super cool uh, just to the end of my driveway because my UPS driver is like really friendly and his daughter reads my books and love that. Uh, So yeah, so I've ridden in a UPS truck and uh, lived to tell the tale. Hi, Heather. I'm alive. The UPS driver is alive and well. (laughs) I have two dogs in the crate because the third played dead. So (laughs) again, part of the recap, okay, is why I'm in my husband's fucking office instead of my studio that is soundproofed, okay? Coming back from Turks and Caicos, we had a two-hour security line, okay? The likes of which even Disney World hasn't seen. Um, Because Trust me, it was worse behind us. And then oh my God. delays. So it took us like 12 hours to get home on a three-hour journey. Oh. And then <laughs> we get home to find out. I wake up in the middle of the night. Our basement's flooded, which includes my office slash studio. God. So, so I am your chaos queen of the week. Um, <laughs> I just spilled a lot just, of coffee this morning. <laughs> this is not a competition, Okay. Because I would win, clearly. Well, oh, it's really my God. windy here, so now I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get out of bed later, but when it's so windy, I'm afraid the tree's going to fall on me, so I can't. <laughs> I mean, I hope I keep all my bad juju to myself. I will try not to spread it to mm, you. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that saintly 
oil painting of a village behind you <laughs> should preserve you. It looks like you've gone to grandma's bu- uh, 24 hour buffet and you're loading up on biscuits and gravy. <laughs> so yeah. So my backdrop is now a, like an oil painting of a German house on a lake and it's from Jason's grandmother who's from Munich. So it's from the grandmother collection at the Salvation Army. <laughs> the vibe is right. Okay. <laughs> no one's going to be looking at me on the Patreon. They're going to be looking at the, the painting of. <laughs> they're, I'm obsessed with it. I can't take my eyes off. I know. It. I know. Like, what am I? Like, I, either, I shouldn't have even bothered putting on makeup today. No, um, you're nothing to me. No one's looking at me. I'm going to go in the basement and I'm going to take video of like what it looks like. It's not the worst it's been in the past, but like. We just got a new couch a week and a half ago, FYI, mm. that is sitting in the basement now wet. Oh, no. So, oh. Yeah. Do you think it can be restored? We're I hoping. My couch. husband's a germaphobe, so mm. he's like super afraid that we're going to die of mold poisoning like within days. Um, I don't think it was that bad. It was like it seeped through the ground, the rain, seeped That's through so the ground. That's weird. Yeah. Well, so our water table is so high. And we live at the bottom of a hill and behind us is like a creek that goes into a pond that goes into the river, right? So like we, all the water flows downhill around our house, which is waterproofed. And I think (laughs) while we were away, we had so many storms that just didn't stop. It was for days of deluge um, that I think like our house just couldn't hold it back anymore. Oh, yeah. And you had an earthquake, too, while you were gone. Oh, What's we up with that? 32. So we had one earthquake and, like, 32 aftershocks. Yeah. So that might not have helped with the whole water table, like, fracturing and splintering and gushing into your home. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, we only have one of yeah. those things. We have the high water table. Yeah. And then instead of earthquakes, the ground just opens up, relieves pressure that way. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd prefer a hell mouth. I'll be honest. Like, I, I think like your house dropping out from underneath you would be terrifying. You usually, you usually get some warning. Like, they say if you get a crack in your wall, that's a warning ahead of time. I would say that would be a huge red flag. Yeah, yeah. That would be a red flag. Yeah. Like, a crack in the ceiling can be like, just like outside forces, but a crack in your wall is a really bad sign and you should seek professional help. I don't know who you would call though. That's what I don't know. Like I would just get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, probably I would just get a moving van, back it <laughs> like, up, start moving <laughs> shit out to, from the other end of the house. Whatever, whatever it doesn't have the crack in it, all of my stuff goes there and then I start throwing it out a window. <laughs> That's yeah. my plan. <laughs> Like reason seven hundred and thirty five why I won't live in Florida. Okay. Like, oh please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when this property is beachfront, which I guess it will be in like fifty years, <laughs> we'll see who's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Until another fifty years where your house is underwater also. But I oh, guess you'll be dead. But I can so. I can sell it when it's beachfront. Right. That is true. That is true. Get out while it's smart. Somebody will buy it. <laughs> well that's true. I guess we live five miles from the ocean, and which is mm. why probably our water table is like it is. So maybe I just wait for the same thing, mm-hmm. and we both sell at the same time. Um, <laughs> and we went I to the desert. Front. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Well, it's oh. Santa Fe for us, babes. <laughs> That's right. There, I hear there's a very nice equestrian community there. Yeah, it'll be time to get in touch with our spirits and like align our chakras and all that. So that's Santa right. Fe it is. Go to Pottery. Sedona and hope the ley lines save us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love making when I need I need parents to be absent in most of my books for various reasons. One is that I just don't want to deal with them. Mm. And so I, I love to make parents retired to New Mexico. It's like <laughs> That's your thing. Several times. Like, oh, she's in Santa Fe. She's in Sedona. (laughs) (laughs) I need her out out of my way. I don't want anybody going, well, why didn't she like ever talk to her mother? Mother's not there. Okay. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just excused. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do it. Get rid of characters you don't want to talk about. Yeah. So people are going to, someday people are going to be like, wow, Natalie, 35 times you have moved someone's mother to New Mexico. What are you trying to say? I'd be like, nothing. I love my mom. My mom's great. <laughs> I mean, I killed Gabe's parents in the book. So, and Bailey's parents. So I guess, I don't know what that says about me. They're dead. <laughs> I swear. It's just, sometimes it's just easier to get rid of them. They live better really, in memory, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, um, the book thing, um, you know, your chaos 
was definitely chaos. I just haven't been sleeping for like a week and a half, maybe longer. I'm just like, oh, no sleeping. I've since cured that with Benadryl. But oh, to- I think you missed me is what it is. You haven't talked to me in a week and a half. That's what it coincides. Yeah, I was upset that you were gone. I was no, I think were- it was guilt because you cheated on me with another podcast. You cheated. Is your horse suffering from itchy, irritated skin? Don't let them be miserable any longer. Kinetic Vets EquiShield CKHC is a veterinarian-developed solution for bacterial and fungal dermatitis in horses. Its powerful formula combines three ingredients to fight bacteria, tackle fungus, and soothe inflamed skin. EquiShield CKHC comes in a convenient shampoo for full-body application, a salve for targeted relief, and a spray for on-the-go treatment. For widespread infections, simply apply the shampoo, let it sit, then rinse. Follow up with a salve or spray for extra relief. See the difference EquiShield CKHC can make for your horse's skin. Visit KineticVet.com or ask your veterinarian to order today. EquiShield CKHC. Relief for your horse, peace of mind for you. You betrayed. You were out of the country with my and weren't friends. to know. Betrayer. Uh huh. We had a nice time too. Uh, but, Bitch. <laughs> I just had to talk to somebody on a microphone. I was dying. I was dying. I was like, no one's heard my thoughts in a week. <laughs> I was on threads too much. I kept deleting things. It was terrible. Thank God you're back. Don't and leave not me. Sleeping. And sleeping. not sleeping. And not sleeping. And I decided that even though I feel super chill about the book I'm working on, I was working on it t- too slowly and I needed to make some progress so I would sleep better. So I, I like forced myself out of the beginning where I've been obsessing for a while mm. and pushed through 10,000 words yesterday. And, um, and I slept better last night, actually. Good. Yeah. So yeah. Like it's not looming so much in your head. You feel yeah, like yeah, and I. Yeah. Uh, that's the crazy thing. Like I didn't even think it was. So I've pushed my anxiety down to this place where I don't know when I'm anxious. I just can't sleep. I can't be healthy, <laughs> like at all. I think it's probably more healthy than when I'm just anxious all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. That's where I'm living at. So I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the frazzled. Yeah, it's been like so when I, you know, I've been riding really inconsistently and not even caring because like I'm just riding to get away from my job kind of not get away from it, but just get out of my head break, because yeah. yeah and so it's like do I want to do a lesson today no I want to listen to a podcast and walk until I finally feel like doing some leg yields and 45 minutes later I'm getting off having walked nice. for 45 minutes and done some leg yields yeah it's um it's probably good because the weather's transitioning to warm um, but it's like, it's kind of funny going, okay, is this a hobby? Because sometimes you, you push and you push and you push so hard at riding, or I know I was for a while. And then I just slowed down over the winter where I was just like, I can't focus on this right now. I can only focus on work. And it, it was interesting to me how riding just became like very casual for me, which is isn't usually but that's good to mix it up it's been good yeah you know it's just like with anything you you can't you burn out if you try and drive so so hard for a specific goal i'm on i mean of course i say this with tongue in cheek because i'm on the opposite like even in a lesson my trainer's like oh should we do that again i'm like no (laughs) <laughs> you know, like, absolutely the fuck not. I'm sweating. Right. Like, why, why would I work harder? But No, this is a sweat drop. <laughs> I believe we're through. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, darn, we got rained out. Mm. Mm. You know, meanwhile, I'm like, I'll talk about this whole, you know, IEA thing this, this summer, which I did find a third member, by the way, for a team. So I have a team. So you're going to show for real? There will be show photos incoming? I have to go shopping. I have to, I have to like... I, I wouldn't say get fit because I don't know if I'll ever get fit, but like I have yeah. to like be more fit. Like I have yeah. to be able to canter around until the judge says stop. And I don't think I'm capable of that right now. I know what you mean. <laughs> yes. You have to be able to canter and that I'm I'm at the stage where I can canter a decent amount, but I need to also um not lose my breath while I'm doing well, that's it. Where I'm at. So that I'm not like yeah. heaving when I get back down to a trot. I'm like, let's just walk. Oh my god. <laughs> Exactly. I'm in the middle stage. Yeah. I don't want to like die out and then lose points because of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. Mm -hmm. 
kind of thing. Um, that whole pride thing gets in the way. Yeah, I, I do have an excessive amount of pride. And I think yeah. if I'm, you know, and it's, I'm in my own way. So, um, but the cool thing is I did get to ride my daughter's pony, who is such a different ride than mm-hmm. my my own horse. So it was really nice for me to have like a forward horse and practice like, ex- you know, the different extensions and then bringing them back and, you know, like, you know, half halting to balance. And so it was, it's really cool. So I'm actually, I am not riding very much, but when I do, it's like with intention. So. Yeah. So he's pretty athletic. You can feel like a little sports car. He is the Energizer Bunny. He's like, <laughs> if I would get it, if he was a car, I would say he would be like a little triumph. You know, mm-hmm. like he's just like fast and zippy, but like, you know, he kind of hugs the roads. Um, <laughs> he's comfortable, but he's got this tick, you know, I guess all my animals have to have something. Um, so <laughs> when he gets excited, he tenses up in the head and he tosses his head like the Mongolian horses do or, and, and so like, you just have this, keeps all four legs on the ground, but you mm-hmm. just have this like head bobbing. Yeah. So we're going to, um, we're going to add some like flaxseed and melatonin to his his meals and maybe some like kamikaze. Uh, one of my clients recommended it, like just some natural herbs to kind of like take the edge off and see if that helps him to just kind of like bring himself a little back to neutral, you know? Yeah. So, um, I mean, he's fun to ride. He has breaks. It's not a problem, but I just don't want him to be so tense. Yeah. He's, he's probably just got expectations. Because he was so. used for lessons, right? He was used for lessons for smaller children too. So a lot yeah. of hands, a lot of hands. And then, um, you know, my daughter and I are both pretty quiet riders. So I think he's come a long way only in the month that we've had him. But he also was an Amish cart horse. And we don't wow. know. Yeah. So he's super road safe. He's very um, smart. He's stoic. But he is mm. seen some shit. Yeah. Yeah, our horses in the parks department, our Percherons, had both been Amish horses. And Mm -hmm. yeah, that kind of stability comes at a price, you know? Right. They've been through it. They've seen it. They've survived it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, he every once in a while he'll startle. But it's a startle. He doesn't really spook. He kind of, you know, he's one eye. So, like, you have to oh, right. approach him the right way. And we're still learning him. But it's funny. My daughter wrote him the other day. And she was like, Mom, it's the best he's ever felt. Um, you know, he actually tried to slow down a little bit like, <laughs> and break the canter. Because normally he just goes. Like, he just mm-hmm. goes until you sit and, and, and really ask him to stop. So, we're starting to see him, like, not just drive forward. Like he's actually starting to get a little personality and we're starting to see a little bit. So I'm excited. I'm going to take yeah. him on the trail. That's going to be such a satisfying transition. Oh, he's That's... going to glow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'm like gonna have to show before and after photos. In six months, be like trotting around with his head down be like, who is he? Oh my God. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And what's I his mean... name? His name is Odin. Odin, uh, Odin. Yeah, Odin, because he's got one eye. So his his owner named him after, you know, the Norse god. But we have to pick a show name. So I'm having a lot of trouble because it's going to be the hunters. Um, and, well, jumpers, maybe, if we can't slow them down. But I need some advice from our clubhouse members and our listeners oh. for show names for this guy. And I'd want them to be, like, you know, appropriate. Because, of course, you know, my daughter's, like, um, naming him Cotton Eye Joe. And, oh, like, my my husband, as a joke, and then my husband was like, what about One-Eyed Willie from the Goonies? And I was like, you need to sit back fucking down. Like, <laughs> absolutely. I'm no, I don't want that over the speaker at a show. Thank you. So this is my request for help from everybody listening is I'll, I'll post a picture in the clubhouse. He's super fucking cute. He's a little, like, bay paint pony mm-hmm. and uh his name is odin so help yeah you want to respect and like build up the single eye situation mm-hmm. you don't want to call out as a silly disfigurement <laughs> no, no i want to you <laughs> like, know what's like, his power that's right no. well he's, yeah and and so like i kind of want to call him like valkyrie's uprising or totally. like something like mm-hmm. like cause he's 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 going to be so flashy like mm-hmm. he's and he's going to be so honest. Like, he just wants to please. So, like, he's going to be, like, someone to, like, be a real fighter. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think um, I think that we should not bring that down with Cotton-Eyed fucking Joe. 
I, yeah, I agree with you. That is super horrific. Just horrendous. even imagining. <laughs> and you're good at you, names too. So if you can get in on this, Natalie, too. Oh, I'll think, oh, think about it. I've yeah, been, uh, yeah. Sometimes I, uh, I had a list of names somewhere and I was looking for it for the book I'm working on. I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh-oh. And so I just kind of waited. I was just like the horse, the horse, the horse. And then a name came to me and I was like, a lot of people use this name around the barn, but it really, I think it's going to suit this horse and kind of like bring the horse's personality out. So I'm not going to worry about originality. I'm just going to use it. So, uh, yeah. Use what like inspires yeah. you. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's a funny one. I feel like I have to get way into this book. And then I keep having weird epiphanies at like random times while I'm out doing farm work and going, I should change this in the beginning. For some reason, it's just the beginning, the beginning, the beginning. I I don't understand why, but I'm trying to just write it. Yeah. It's being weird. It's being weird, but it's not being bad. You know what I mean? Well, it's weird different. It's definitely different. Yeah. And I think that's where it is. Cause you, Mm -hmm. you had a certain way of doing things for a long time. Like, I found, you know, when I switched over and, and started doing the, the the sweet romance, that was such a different way of writing for me that the first book took so long to yeah. get out. And then the second book is releasing May 1st. That one, it was so much easier to write. And I'm, you know, I'm already working on book three. So like, I think just starting something new, there's always a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. And I really was just... I don't want to say burned out because I was burned out last year and that was like, there was no other way to describe it. I didn't want to touch anything. This year I just felt tired. <laughs> well, you just, have like, a lot really tired. On. Yeah, yeah. It's been a lot. It's continuing to be a lot. Things keep adding and I'm just like, okay, all right. I'm not going to stress. I'm just going to let these things happen and sure. Just keep adding. It's fine. Yeah. I get it's yelled fine. at when I keep adding things. So I have people in my life that like literally, I'm not adding anything. I swear well, other people I'm not are, adding anything. So, so I got asked to do something recently. I asked me, I, we were talking about this a little earlier um, on text. Like I got asked to be an affiliate for like this travel company, right? I'm like, I need that. Like I need a hole in the head. Right. Like I don't need another job and being an affiliate is a job. And also mm-hmm. it's a little salesy. So like, you know, no thanks. Like <laughs> I'm like. I have yeah. so much going on. I can't focus on something else. I can barely focus on the things I have, obviously, because I forget most basic things, right. like looking at the date of a passport. <laughs> you know, you know. After that happened, i I texted uh, I texted my son's girlfriend, and I was like, "Hey, as soon as you get out of class, I need you to <laughs> download the Delta app." I need you to scan in your passport. <laughs> I just need it done, okay? I don't want any surprises. She's like, okay. <laughs> because I do not need to be going on vacation next month. That is the last thing my life needs right now. No, no, no. Don't learn, if anything, learn from me and my well, issues. Sadly, I'm going on vacation next month. <laughs> Literally in like three weeks, <laughs> but it'll be done. Then the, the summer vacation will be done and dusted, which is a, it's a good thing to get it out of the way early because the hurricane season makes traveling so difficult. Yeah, you know you're always worried about. Well, I was gonna go somewhere, but now I have to you know spend all this time battening down the hatches and farm sitter can't come and you know just the whole thing. So at least summer vacation will be out of the way. It won't suck. <laughs> like it did last year. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Well, uh, I yeah. I have some bad news. I <gasps> might have to cancel Iceland trip. Oh. I might have to cancel it because people are so nervous about the eruptions, which is a really small eruption and it's not affecting travel at all. But no. so like so many people have backed out that like I might have to cancel it unless I get new people. Oh, that's so a shame. I would think a volcano would be a good reason to go. I How often do you get volcano. to see it? Yeah. Never. It's a, I would love to see it. And uh and it's just a shame because it's such a great trip. Like I'm so yeah. bummed. So I I was hoping for a, a summer vacation, but it may not happen now. Yeah. Well you're Ooh. well at, at any rate, your spring break was so late, it's practically summer. <laughs> Get that our spring break is it. always around Easter. It's always in April, and our school doesn't get out until the end of June. 
Oh, really? Oh, I forgot yeah. about that part. Yeah, because Calvin gets out of school in like like two weeks. It's so insane. That's insane. <laughs> it's the it's beginning not of May. Even... Universities get out super early. Yeah, but no, my university only got out Memorial Day weekend. Oh, it's man. the, the south. northeast. It's because just... it's too hot to be in school. <laughs> I do remember him going to school almost until Fourth of July, and I was like, "What the hell's going on? You don't have air conditioning in your school, <laughs> right?" Like, so right. weird. I know. And so it's, it's, it's funny, but I've, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm going to do this summer. Um, but I haven't been up to the cabin in a while. So maybe I'll yeah. just, you know, once a month I'll go up for like a week up there. Um, and then obviously work, work is, is something else. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm not sure where yet, but I'm going to do some like writing overnights where I go by myself to a oh, nice quiet so hotel room with white sheets and room service and <laughs> there will be writing and no people around me that is so, literally how i wrote slay all day the novella yeah and that is how i wrote half of backdoor horse not backdoor horse um yeah backdoor horse i i ended up writing mostly from hotels and airplanes because mm. it was uninterrupted yeah it's so good yeah it's crazy and my house is gonna be full this summer so oh. i was like this is not the summer that I needed, but it is the summer that I am getting. <laughs> Family time. Oh my God. <laughs> Embrace the chaos, okay? And welcome like back to my life because you had a break and now it's over. I did. I did. It didn't feel like it. It's gone so soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really can't. We were looking at the board today and I was trying to think if I could fit in a writing lesson next week and just looking at my week right before I go to Kentucky. Like, oh my God, what is happening? So, oh my God. And One then of these days I'm going to get there. You've got to, I mean, you should just come this next year, year. This year I should go because, spoiler alert, my book is going to be a VIP like gift. They're going to do the first three chapters as some big promotion coming out and i'm like what you should come i know i really feel like i should but i I also feel like i have every weekend in may booked and so i'm gonna be exhausted (laughs) (laughs) exhaustion what's exhaustion (laughs) yeah yeah well do you want us do you want to say anything else about the book or are you just gonna let that kind of play out well, it's, it's the like, book with Sid Collier. So it's right. um the, the working title is Beyond Expectations and it's it's uh it's not yet like so it's listed for pre order, but we're really trying to hold out for the Trafalgar Square books release. Um so there's gonna be more coming from it down the road. But yeah, this little bundle is gonna be like actually printed the first three chapters as a book and then it's gonna have like a, a little letter from the editor in the front. Oh, cool. I'm going to go get one. Yeah, you have so, to. I think I saw this is the first time Trafalgar Square Books is coming to Kentucky, at least in a very long time. So that's super exciting. Oh, I'm super excited. Like I'm, this was just dropped on us last week. Like we I love that more bookstores are doing this event because last year was the first year that Taberton Equine Books did it. And so I went along you know it was like well you've got the eventine series so let's do this yeah, and now this sense. year obviously we're doing it again and yeah we will be selling sets for a discount again and you better come and get them um because it's the last time that's going to happen and last year i sold out of book one by friday afternoon you and always I sold sell out of book of, one yeah friday afternoon of a four-day event and then i sold out of books two and three on saturday so it was intense and so you should come. You should come see me on Thursday yeah. and get a set of the Eventine series signed. Just trust me on that. Just come and get it. Um, yeah. And then, but what we were hearing announcements for different book signings taking place at different booths, like with writers who are signing yeah. your, their memoirs or their training books or whatever. And so for this year to be now two bookstores at this event, plus whoever signing at magazines or different vendors and things like that. It's just like, I love this building and building and building presence of horse book authors. And we're like in our space, you know, we're out there with our people. Oh, I think it's really cool. I think we're in a really cool place right now. Just like, it is so cool. And I love seeing all the authors coming out. Like every time we go to these events, I meet new authors that I didn't know about before. And I think just expanding the genre and getting everybody out there. 
Yeah. It's just, you know, years ago when I started doing this, you'd show up for an hour and sign some books and leave. And now it's, she's, Full you know, days. Jean specifically, it's, hey, Tim, we're getting, yeah, 10 authors in one location for an entire day, for an entire weekend. That's <laughs> so cool. It is so cool. Mm-hmm. And so I got to ask you a really like probing question here is Ooh. who, because I know you, I know you're going to be going across country. Like who are you going to like, try not to fangirl over? Like, who are you looking forward to seeing and hopefully meet? Okay. Uh, so I don't know yet. <laughs> That's so funny <laughs> that you asked that because they posted the draw today and I keep meaning to look at it so I can kind of plan my Saturday and I haven't yet. So <laughs> All right. I'm not All right. actually so sure, unfortunately. TBD. Yeah, it is a bit of a TBD. Um, but uh, I guess I'll, sh- I'll share in the Facebook group. How's that sound? I'll, sh- I'll share in the, in the, in the clubhouse. What I'm, us who I'm okay. definitely going to see. And, uh, you know, a word of warning, if you're going and you want to catch up with people while you're there, um, if you have Verizon, that shit turns off. Like, there's no phone service on Saturday on Cross Country Day because there's literally like 20,000 people there or something. But <laughs> I have AT&T and it worked beautifully all last time. I was able to upload videos on course and stuff. Um so you might not be able if I'm out on course and you want to come and find me and scream with me or cry quietly with me, which I do a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know if you'll be able to to locate me and I apologize in advance. But I got I will be like I said I'll be at Taberton Thursday and Friday all day, so you can come and find me there, and then Saturday morning and Saturday evening. But in the middle, bitch, horses cross horses, country. Horses, yeah, horses, you gotta horses, go. Horses. You gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta, gotta go. I'm writing, a, I'm writing a, another book in the Ventian world. I gotta get out there and that's see the right. things. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's where you get the inspiration. It's incredible. It just fills you up. Just yeah, I'm just bubbling really. over with inspiration. There's always somebody to book signing. So there's always, um, it's usually a woman who's like upper upper middle aged. I'm gonna say I don't know what that means, but there's always a woman who's like, oh, you write books. Um, have you ever tried this? And she's got like a genius tip. And so this woman, the last book signing, she was like, oh, you write books? I read that uh, author so-and-so would get good ideas from going on walks. So you should try that. You should go on walks. And I was like, wow, thank you so much for that hot tip on how to write a book. <laughs> from <laughs> like, someone who's I, never written a book. <laughs> I had a fucking stack of books. I was like, I actually, because I write about equestrians, I tend to go ride my horse and work on ideas on horseback. She was like, oh, wow, that's pretty slick. Like, yeah. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Not convinced. I'm sorry. I think she knows better than you. Every time. <laughs> no, it's that or my other favorite is when I'm sitting there and someone comes up to you and they're like, Hey, Natalie, I have an idea for a book that you should write. And then if it's nonfiction, you're like, have you met my friend Heather Wallace? And I'm like, bitch. I did. We're not I starting did, that. I did six someone on you. <laughs> but in fairness, that lady came up to me and she was like, starts talking about like, she just seemed, she was really into travel and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, you should talk to Heather. And then you talked to her for like an hour. So it worked out. <laughs> I think I did sell her a book actually yeah. um, at the end of the day. No, but the other one who was like, I have this idea for a story and I want to write a book, but I don't want to write it. And I'm like, I, I think I told Could my husband. Been on Fiverr? <laughs> I was like, well, and then, you know, and I had someone else on Facebook who's not a horse person at all, but like, she's like, oh, you write books? She's like, I have a book I want to write. I'm like, that's so great. I was like, well, here's my suggestion for you. And she was like, oh, no, I don't want to write it. I'm like, but you said, <laughs> and she goes, no, I don't want to, re-, she goes, I don't want to relive it. It was hard enough as it was. I just, I just want to write, have someone write about it. I'm like, but if you're going to be like, have someone ghostwrite it for you or co-write it. You still have to relive it. Like talk about it a little. (laughs) Jake here. And I will say that even though I did, it's, you know, I didn't ghostwrite because I'm, I've got a co-author byline with Sydney for this book coming out. Which is awesome. Good way to do it too. So awesome. And, and Sid was, is so much fun to work with. Like she and I, if we don't, if we don't talk for a couple of weeks, like we go into, just like you and I, like we, we go into kind of like this withdrawal. Um, cause we I spent so much idea. time together. I was together. fighting with Sid for your affections. <laughs> oh yeah. Jeez. Just wait the book comes out. You're really going to have to fight her. Um, 
No, and she, it, it, but I will say like, that was probably the biggest like exercise for me, like a writing exercise. I've never written someone else's story in their words. Like I right. found it extremely challenging. It was awesome. I think I did a really good job. And so far the, the like editors are, are ecstatic, but I'm like, I don't think I want to do that again. <laughs> <gasps> no, that sounds really, 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 really hard. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, oh, it was so I was hard. I thought I thought you know what I can't really wuss out of this this three day draw of things you know because like it, this is going to come out I think right before it or something. So I am glancing over the the four star entries right now, and I'm going to tell you who I would like to see and why. Okay. 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 Because okay? I don't want to I don't want to leave people hanging. I know they're excited I, for I, me. I was so I was let me worried. tell you. I have a couple of interesting, most of my connections to these are through, I am either, people have either talked these people up to me or I know them personally, or I've taken their lessons on Ride IQ and I like the way they teach. Okay. So. This uh, is a four star? This is four star. Okay. Five star is, five star is kind of always the same people. Do you know what I mean? It is. And so I'm like, okay, great. Um, but I don't have a lot of personal connections to, to them. Usually like Philip Dutton, I, I, I took a lesson at Philip Dutton's barn once when I was a teenager. So I like. I'm connected in that and, and I always enjoy watching him ride and stuff like that. And um, I know Boyd yeah, Martin's publicist and he, yeah, everybody's uh, run into Boyd at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and he's himself. everywhere and he's local to me and <laughs> mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's, yeah. he's been there, done that. It kind of is a little bit. And then, so I looked down here and I say, for one thing, we love Will Coleman. Oh yeah. Um, he was on the, that um, ride IQ podcast about uh, sports psychology. And it was super interesting. And then I take a lot of lessons that are recorded by um, Leslie Law. Okay. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing him and his horse, Lady Chatterley. That's love, a great name. I know. I love the way he teaches. And um, I really, his one warm up just works for Ben. And I just like that. And then Hannah Sue Hallberg is another one whom I really enjoy. And then Tick Maynard is riding. Um, and you know, Tick just won the road to the horse, right? Yeah. Where he made, um, a four day, like four days of training a horse, which is insane. And he kind of managed to point that out, which was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so In there's his a Tick way. Yeah, exactly. Like he's just the coolest. Right. And then, and of course, Sinead is the coolest too. And she doesn't have a horse in, but I'm rooting for you, Sinead. I want to see you again. And then someone was telling me about just how great Jessica Phoenix is. And she has several horses in. And they all have cute names. So she has Fluorescent Adolescent, who's like a very spotty horse I saw last year. Like he's brown and white. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm not even going to say Paints or Pinto anymore. I don't care. He's spotty. And then um, she has a horse called Wabbit with a W. Oh. <laughs> which is adorable. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, it's just, it's such a good lineup. I, I just, you, I don't think I could go wrong at any point. Of course, Tammy Smith is there again. Um, with my bomb who won last year. I just, I, I don't think that you can go wrong at all with either the five or the four star. If you chose 20 minutes to be on that course, you would see rides that will blow your mind. Well, so. and that's the thing. Like if I were to come down ever, I couldn't do it without my Nikon. Like I'd have to, I'd have my face behind mm-hmm. the camera the entire time. And then I get in trouble with the OPs. So like, <laughs> not that I'd be there to post about it or anything, but like, I just, I love photographing cross country. like catching them at the right time and seeing how they come into these jumps. It's unbelievable athleticism. It really is. Like even for me, a person who goes to races really, you know, I, almost every time I go to Lexington for one, I go to Keeneland, um, mm-hmm. you know, and I've, I've spent so much time at the track and the difference between watching a galloping thoroughbred at three right. and watching a, at a mature, extremely, uh, well conditioned and extremely thrilled horse. They love uh, their jobs. Yeah, doing one of those galloping fences flat out, and you can walk right up. You can be four or five feet from that fence. Yep. And this horse just roars past you. Just the power and the, the pounding of the enthusiasm, and yep. just there's just so much joy in it. That's why I say I cry all the time. I can't help it. It's just. It's mind boggling and it doesn't matter if you know a thing about eventing or Mm -hmm. if you've spent your whole life trail riding or whatever. When you see these horses and you see just that, it's just, it's really, there's so much joy in it. 
and just I I love it. I there's there's an energy to it. Like mm-hmm. I know I know I talk shit about Aventors being crazy, okay? But it's just because it's jealousy, right? Like I don't have that button in my body to make me want to do that, but God, I love watching it. It's amazing to watch. And I, I do love watching horse racing too. Like I was watching it the other day, but there's something about eventing and like, like watching the different takeoff points, watching how the riders handle and balance their horses, like, or mm-hmm. how they pat them down at a full gallop between fences because yeah. they, did, they took that fence and saved their ass. Like I <laughs> yeah. love it. There's so much drama in it, but like good drama. There is. And there is a power that, uh, those, those riders have in turning terror because there's almost all of them will talk about the nerves before that starting box where they're going like, I can't do this. Can't do this. Definitely going to die. Definitely going to die. And then channeling that into, Oh, this is what I do. Just right. like their horse does just like, and I trust my horse and I trust my instincts and I trust my training. And these are, this is what we do. And the smile after every fence, like, ha, that's right. Like, yep. Did another we, one. This is why we did it. One more down. <laughs> yeah. I really miss, I, and that's one of the reasons I want to go to the Kentucky three day. Cause like I miss when they used to come up, they used to have the CCIs and CDIs up in, um, or CICs in the horse park of New Jersey. And it was yeah. an international, it was like one of the big qualifying races. And it was awesome to go to that. And I just like, we don't have access to that as much here anymore. Right. So you have to really travel. Like we have to go down to like to Fair Hill mm-hmm. um, in October for that. And, you know, it's a bit of a distance. It's like a good two hours, but um, it's doable. But yeah, I would love to come down there one day. Ah! I have it's such FOMO right now. I always have FOMO <laughs> watching you on your social media. <sighs> That's so. why I do it. <sighs> That's why I do it. <laughs> you just, uh, just want people such to be tease. jealous of me. <laughs> such a tease. One of these days, I'm not going to have so much in May, and I'm going to just like, or my kids will be, you know, busy, and they mm-hmm. won't need a parent, and I'll just be like, you know what? I'm just hopping down to Lexington for the weekend, ladies. That is true. One of these days, that is that is how it will be. Yeah. I never used to be able to go anywhere because I worked every single weekend that there was. Yeah. And now I'm and like, I do. Oh, I have so much time. I mean, I have no time because I really should be working, but I can make my own schedule and I can destroy it at will. Well, and, and isn't that isn't that the rub? Like, I make my own schedule and still I don't have enough time to ride, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> but, it's so funny. I'm like, wow, I really have to work all the time. Yeah. I am my own boss. What the fuck? Yeah, and I am a taskmaster. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Today was supposed to be my day off and I caught up in a whole bunch of computer work, but I will say, like... I'm and in in eventually I'm going to cut you off and I'm going to hang up on you so I can go ride and that is good. <gasps> oh, I think I can ride too. I, it's only three thirty. Oh. Anything could happen. Why are you trying to compete yeah. with me? Like you're always competing with me because I'm going to Disney tomorrow <laughs> and I won't have time to ride. Is that what you wanted to hear? <laughs> like a second time in a month, you're spoiled. Uh, no, I think it's been a full month since I went last. Okay. Well, then that's I bought an annual pass, so I have to use it. And tomorrow's the last day. It's going to be like below 80 degrees until like October. So smart. Well, November. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I got to go. I got to go. That's going to be so fun. Yeah. Well, I think my next trip is going to be New York to Westminster. But then my Mm -hmm. next trip trip is I'm going to be in Lexington. So I'm going to be in Lexington, but I'm going to be there two weeks after you. Oh, right. So I'm going to be there for the American Horse Publications Conference. And I just want to shout out congratulations to all the people who won and are like finalists for the awards. Um, They are not me. So we entered the podcast and (laughs) I entered Back to Our Horse. Did not make it, but that's okay. Because we won last year. We did. It would be super selfish of us to win every year. That's um, that's But we are selfish. So of course we want to win. We do, but we need to leave the field open for some of our friends every now and then. So nope. congrats to them for sure. sure. But still that I'm not going because I'm going to London. So, Well, I'm going to go and cheat on you with <gasps> Susan Friedland, who you cheated on me with on the podcast. So what? yeah, girl. Oh, my God. Yeah. Susan 
is two timing us with us. She's two timing us. <laughs> She's our third. <laughs> We're gonna love triangle and Susan. It's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to go see Susan and we'll talk shit about you. Cause I know you were talking nice about me. So, <laughs> oh my God, I think I said so many nice things about you. Oh, so and... now I have to listen to it. God damn it. It's like rubbing salt in the wound. Actually, I really don't think, <laughs> I don't think you came up at all. Uh... Oh, good. Betrayer. No, I'm just I didn't. Kidding. Yeah, I didn't bring up the podcast. Or it was just about books and yeah. and and weird stuff. Um, so <laughs> they wanted to know about foals, for, and I was like, "Oh, let me tell you all about those like hairy, sweet, adorable little ghouls." <laughs> and they were like, "What?" So I'm like, yeah, so foals are insane. <laughs> I I just spent this week. I was working at a racing barn, and there's a lot of stud colts there, and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh my god." Boys with balls suck. Like <laughs> nonstop. As in you your pull face. your entire body out of their mouth. Like, God damn it. Hundred percent. I would like one hand was like blocking their heads while they're trying to inhale me because I smelled yeah. so good. Cause you know, or I because I worked on a mare or like that they just wanted to <laughs> mouth on me. And it's like a pacifier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, one reared and I was mm-hmm. like, bitch, get on your legs. No. And yeah. then and then, you know, I was like, oh, my God, when are you getting like neutered again? Like like when cut, that'd be great. But that's okay because they're gonna go win it's gonna be fine but i was like oh i remember why i don't like young animals like in general and <laughs> it was just a lot it was like four studs i, was like, I oh, remember Jesus. i remember a foal chewing on me once and i was like damn it really is all baby animals just chew on you it doesn't they matter. really do <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of animal it is it's a all baby species. you're in its mouth <laughs> I thought one was going to actually inhale me like, <laughs> like, like, you know how, so some horses, they, after like the session, they like to breathe you in and like smell mm-hmm. your nose and like, you know, you share scents or whatever. Uh, he like literally, and he did that big, like nose clearing. And he <laughs> I was like, Oh God, she smells so good. And I don't know why. And I feel so good. And I don't know why. <laughs> one, oh. one definitely was a little inappropriate, but you know. <laughs> It's fun, yeah. But baby animals are cool, so of course you're gonna talk about baby animals all the time. But yeah, yeah. No, all I want to podcast talk about baby animals, super That's sweet, lovely. as innocent as can be, and you turned it into something dirty. No, I turned it into something about me. Did you oh, see right. how I did that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I. So I guess Susan has is gonna moderate a panel on some <gasps> topic, and they gave me like six topics that could be the topic and they were like hey do you want to be a part of any of these and i'm like sure and she, she's like okay we'll let you know what it is i'm like i guess i'm just gonna go with whatever one they shot they jump out at me <laughs> but you know i do better like when i don't prepare i guess it sounds like something you'd have to do like for a, a um oh like a bonding thing at an office you know, where they're like, mm. okay, now we're all going to talk about this subject for five minutes. And they're like, oh, I don't want to well, yeah. participate. And I think I'm one of three people on the panel. And so, like, we're all in different kind of um, equine businesses, like as yeah. business owners and stuff. So, like, but it'll be funny because I don't know who's going to attend because, remember, this is the equine media. So, it could be journalists, photographers, editors, TV producers. Like, it could be <laughs> authors, freelance writers. So, like, I just got to get up there and just wing it as you I You don't do. even know what hat to wear. I don't know. Yeah. Do I you wear the so pink many, hat, the black hat? Equine, no, you have so many equine jobs. <laughs> You're oh, like, that. I thought you were very you, literal. I know, right? You're like, do I talk about being a photographer or a writer or a journalist or a bodywork practitioner or I don't know. Yeah. There's you got a lot so going on. I figured whatever it is, I'll just, I'll figure it out. <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be fun. But yeah, Oof. I think, uh, so that'll be nice, but I'll miss you. I don't think you've ever been to one of those. I haven't. No. I don't think you miss that, but that's okay. I don't think it's for me. You're not really I, – I love you, but you're not like social. You got to be like very social yeah. to do these things. I like everybody that I know that, that goes. I like very much one-on-one. But you already know them mm-hmm. too. Like this is very much a networking thing I for hate a networking. lot of people. Oh, networking and gives me the willies. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, I feel I like, like – I like it I'm, when people come to me. 
Well, I, that's what I think. I think I've been there long enough now that I'm kind of an established presence. Like people are like, oh, Heather's here again. You know what I mean? Like, I'm Yeah, like, I don't think it would take you long to make that impression either. Like an hour yeah. tops. <laughs> the, the, everybody's like, go talk to her. Although there is one person that I, I've met like seven times and he forgets me every time. And oh my he, God. Like, he's the publisher of like all the major magazines. I'm like, really? Oh, That's great. Yeah. But it's fine. <laughs> like I think we were reintroduced at Equine Affair this year and I was like, oh, I'm not embarrassed at all by the fact that this man doesn't remember me. So, so he publishes a lot of equine magazines. So like this is a man who meets a lot of women. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you trying to say? I look like everyone else? I don't Sweetheart, stand out. He's the only man in a scene of women. He doesn't know where to look. <laughs> he's gay. I'm sure he's gay. <laughs> but yes, I see your point. No, no. He's definitely, you know, an established guy and he's one of the bigwigs. So, I mean, it just, I'm like, the day that man remembers my name is the day I know I've made it in this industry. Oh, you can be setting up very high, the, high water mark. Try to swim up to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go big a, or go home. That was a one hour in metaphor. It didn't make any sense. It's okay. I'm very goal oriented. So we'll yeah. see what happens. But yeah, so that'll be fun. So, I mean, we're going to have so much to talk about coming up. Uh, yeah. I don't know what. What are we going to have to talk about? Um, well, the aftermath of the Kentucky the Friday, day, our, our book releases, um, you know, all the things, your London trip, your Disney trip, my Lexington trip, like we're going to have loads of stuff. So like we have yeah. to just keep everybody everybody's going to have to watch the out. loop. If I ever take another riding lesson, I'll talk about that. <laughs> Boy, this, that well, vanished. I took one a month ago and it just sort of didn't happen again. Let's, before we go, cause I'm going to have to go to my riding lesson. Let's mm. do our adulting wins of the week. Oh, if I can ooh. find one. <laughs> <laughs> My salty way because I'm not Heather this week. <laughs> I wish it wasn't true, but yeah, that's a yeah. win. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I had a normal week. I went to the gym three times. I got an okay amount of sleep thanks to Benadryl. I'll be real with you. Um, I rode my horse a couple of times and I got past 10,000 words in my book and I didn't die. So it was like a very straightforward week for me. No, <laughs> that's amazing. The coffee spilling everywhere this morning. That's Whereas that. Heather. Oh my God. Well, your win might so, be surviving. <laughs> my win is I'm here. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. I'm alive. I'm dry. Um, I did get the passports done. Mm -hmm. okay? That was incredible. I got my kids on that plane and I have one that's a very nervous flyer. So when mm -hmm. um, I got to sit on a beach and show my kids what a, like a virgin daiquiri tasted like, so that was another win. Mm -hmm. um, I got to, uh, I, I, I got to find out about this, this three day event promo for my new book coming out that I didn't know about. So like lots of good things and I'm going to get to ride my pony. And that's the thing I'm most excited about. Yay! I'm gonna go ride pony, my pony time. Pony mm -hmm. time. Hopefully, he's not feral. <laughs> <laughs> that will be the eventing triumph or the adulting triumph of the week. If we, if, if he, he's if not he takes me eventing, we're both gonna die. So <laughs> maybe you could take Odin. You know, maybe. Odin would be great. You could do starter. Boop. So one of my things and one of my goals is gonna be to like do a couple spring rides and just go out and meet a friend and just do like a little nice little walk trot trail ride. Cause once he canters like that is it, he only wants to canter and the first day out, I don't need to deal with that, but yeah, he's got a really comfortable canter. So eventually we'll work out. <laughs> Maybe in the fall we'll do some hunter paces. I don't know if I can get, ever get Ben to, to re um, reconsider jumping. I would really like to do some hunter paces cause we have a really active hunt in Alachua mm -hmm. County and I would really like to go. Hunter pacing again. So we'll see. Cause I think you would like it. Um, and I was going to, but I'm going to have my own truck and trailer later this year, but it might be much later this year. <laughs> I heard an aside on a podcast that made me wonder <laughs> if it's going to be a while before that happens, but you know, <laughs> well, and just to refer back to the Hunter pace, you know, all of the jumps have workarounds, so you don't have to go over the jumps if he can't jump. Yeah. Yeah. We could just I, go out and canter around the country, which would be nice too. Yeah, so exactly. It might be a good plan so, for November yeah. when that starts up again. I think that'd be fun. Okay, Hooray. so maybe we have something to look forward to together, but separate. Oh, I like that. <laughs> All right. Well, I will talk to you very, very soon. And uh, yeah, keep thinking of those 
horse show names for me though, because like I need help. Yeah, we're all gonna. That's everybody's job now is horse show names. Yes, for Odin. We're on it. Yes, we're on it for I'll Odin. Send, I'll post a picture on the clubhouse so people can see what he looks like. All right, we're on it. All right, all right. Bye. Bye.